In this video we're going to look at saving for retirement and we'll do these two examples, seven and eight. <coughs> so um, um, let's see, basically we're going to start with a couple of terms and you can either you know write these down or, or, um, or print it off, whichever you prefer. But um, we need to understand this before we move on. If your nest egg, okay, is the balance of your retirement account at the time of retirement. So basically, nest egg might be, uh, as we see in example seven, we're going to have a nest egg of a hundred thousand dollars. So you're working, you're working, and and, and you save up to a hundred thousand for when you're sixty or sixty-five or whatever age you plan to retire at. Okay, so that's nest egg. Now. Um, when you start withdraw after you retire at age six or sixty five and you start with withdrawing on the money you've saved up there's different ways of doing it here's two ways one way is just to live off the interest now that way is called a perpetuity so if we have a hundred thousand dollars in there and it's accumulating interest every month we just live off the interest well you probably wouldn't live off the interest of that that amount of money but but you, that's a perpetuity so if you had say a million dollars or something like that you might live comfortably off the interest so that's a perpetuity it's an arrangement that withdraws only interest earned each month okay now what's much uh, more common would be an annuity an annuity is where yeah of course you live off some interest because it earns interest but you live off like the amount that you're that you earned your nest egg, right? So an annuity is an arrangement that arrangement that withdraws both principal and interest earned each month. So in other words, if you save up for a hundred thousand dollars, the annuity means you're taking out a certain amount of this hundred thousand, and of course you'll you'll get some interest because you have a lot all this money in the bank, and while you're retiring. Uh, while you're at your age 66 and 67 and 68, I mean this money that this big nest egg, of course, is accumulating interest. So you're getting money from interest and also from the hundred thousand, the the principal itself. Okay, and um, of course we're going to need some formulas to help us calculate things here. And so we have two formulas, and we're just in this video. We're just going to look at the first one. The first one is your monthly annuity payment or yield. Okay is equal to the nest egg times R, where R is the monthly interest rate, and T is the term of the annuity. And what that number of months, what that means is like, for example, seven, it's a 20 year annuity. That means that um, you're planning on being retired for 20 years, and then what? So basically what you're saying is, for example, let's retire at age uh, 65, okay and it's a 20 year annuity so what's going to happen in 20 years the 20 year annuity means you plan to die at age 85 okay because <laughs> if you live past there you know money left okay <laughs> so that's a 20 year annuity so these things are called fixed term annuities. There's also other types of annuities, but we're just looking at fixed term annuities, okay? And, um, you know, thank goodness for Social Security, uh, some people might think, because uh, if you don't happen to save up a big enough nest egg, or if you live too long, then you might be out of luck under a scheme like this. But in any case, let's just... Uh, go to example seven so so basically the um, formula is you take your nest egg multiplied by the monthly interest rate and then by one plus r to the power of t now t once again it's the term of the annuity which is 20 years but it's it's a number of months so when we calculate t we must give the number of months so we got to multiply the years by 12 right to get number of months and it's over 1 plus r to the power of t minus 1. So for this example 7, we'll do it slowly together. Our monthly, find the monthly, so suppose we have a nest egg of $100,000 with an APR annual percentage rate of 3% compounded monthly. Find the monthly annuity yield for a 20 year annuity. Okay, so the monthly annuity yield or the monthly payment you might just want to think of it that way sorry monthly payment 
um, is equal to the nest egg, which a nest egg here is a hundred thousand dollars, right? Times R, so times, and we have to figure out what R is. So I'm going to write this down, and I'd like you to write it down too. The monthly we're talking about, not the not three percent. That's the annual percentage rate. What we want to look at is monthly interest rate. Uh, R is equal to, now the APR, annual percentage rate, is 3%, so what's the monthly interest rate? Calculate that. Okay, so 3%, of course, as we know, is 3 over 100, right? And as the decimal, three three hundredths is zero point zero three. So we take the a APR of three percent and divide by twelve to get the monthly interest rate, right? So put that in the calculator. You should get zero point zero zero two five, right? And if R equals that, the other thing we're going to need in this um, calculation is 1 plus r. What's 1 plus r equal to? Now what's t equal to? So 1 plus r would be 1 plus this would be 1.0025, right? And t is the term of the annuity in months. Okay, so how many months are we talking about here? How long is this and how long is this $100,000 going to be paying out money for us? So we're talking about um, 20 years, but is t equal to 20? No, because we're talking about months, so it's 20 times 12, right? So t equals 240, right? So r is 0 0.0025, 1 plus r is 1.0025, and t is 240. And then we plug this into this uh, formula and make a careful calculation, and we're good. But uh, once again, if you can if you can figure out r, 1 plus r, and t, then um, that's 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 really half the work. So and of course, pick the correct formula because as as we go through these this uh, chapter, we're going to have different formulas. So you got to pick the right formula first too. So now it's just a matter of calculating. So again, it's the nest egg, and I got to do it down here now. One hundred thousand, okay, times R the interest rate zero point zero zero two five times. And I'll just take this out, sorry. So the monthly annual annuity yield equals this. And so we got 1 plus r, 1.0025 to the power of t. What's t? See, I'm, I'm filling out this formula. To the power of t, to the power of 240, right? All over. 1 plus r to the power of t, 1.0025 to the power of 240, then subtract 1. Now, does that make sense? Have checked the two formulas. You got your nest egg, you got r, you got 1 plus r to the power of t, then you got over 1 plus r to the power of t minus 1. Does that make sense? So please make sure you definitely write this line down and then calculate this carefully. So I guess what I would suggest um, just to be doubly sure or the, the simplest way to calculate this might be to calculate the top then calculate the bottom and then divide the two numbers. Um, you can try a whole one line calculation if you like but you might mess that up if you forget to put parentheses around the bottom of the fraction. Um, so I guess I'll do it both ways just to show but I'll do it the, the way I, I'll probably do it for most of these examples is just calculate the top then calculate the bottom then divide because that might be the the um, the the way we can avoid errors the best way to avoid making an error anyway so a hundred thousand um, times 0 0.0025 um, times 1.0025 to the power of 
240, so I guess I did the top with a one line calculation like that. Um, on a different calculator, you if you're calculating this, you got to think about PEMDAS, order of operations, okay? PEMDAS, and you've got to start with first things first. Exponents come first, and then we multiply. So if you're doing with a with a calculator like this, you're going to go uh, 1.0025 uh, to the power of 240, and then you're going to calculate that. Whoops, 1.0025 to the power of 240 equals that. Then we multiply by this one times 0 0.0025 equals that and then we multiply by the 100,000 okay times 100,000 equals that. So either case we've got 4, 5, 5, 1, 8, eight and so on and again um, you know you could if you put in if you put in four decimal places, you'd probably get the right answer to the nearest cent. Um, but then, do you, how are you going to remember? And 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 so and there's going to be some situations where four decimal places aren't going to be enough for a calculation either. So I guess if you really want to avoid making any errors at all, just put the whole thing in because you don't want to make an make an error while you're calculating. You don't want to round anything while you're calculating, basically, because you because you're your um, answer might be off. It's one thing when you get the final answer, round it to get to get the nearest cent. That's okay, but if you round this number while you're calculating, the answer might be off. So in any case, that's that. Then we've got to do this one, right? And um, 1.0025 to the power of 240 and then subtract one so on this calculator I'm putting the whole thing in in one line and then I'm just going to press enter of course if you have a different type of calculator that's 1.0025 um, to the power of 240 equals that number then subtract one and we get that so we should have the same thing of course and um, just to make sure you don't make a mistake, you might want to put in the whole number 0 0.820754995. I mean, once again, like if you put in, say, five decimal places here for the bottom, you'd probably get the right answer. But uh, if you don't want to have to remember how many decimal places I need for which particular type of problem, you might as well just put in the whole number and then just divide it and uh, then you're done, right? So if we divide this then, that would be 455.1887488 divided by 0 0.8207 54995, right? Equals and we should get 554.5975 etc and round that to the nearest cent and what's your answer? $554 and then we've got see it goes 59 and then there's a 7 so the 7 rounds up and so you add one cent to the nine and then 59 plus one of course is 60. So this will round up to $554.60. And just a case in point, if we did happen to round a little bit too much while we were calculating, just for example, um, say if you went 455.189 over say 0 0.82 you might be a little bit off okay so 455.182 divided by oh sorry 189 divided by 0 0.82 would be 555.11 approximately okay so if you round before You've got your final answer, 
then your final answer is going to be off. This one is correct, 554.60. This one is off by um, 51 cent, if you see. Okay. 555.11 minus 554.60. That's a 51 cent difference in the answer. Okay. So you don't want to round too much until you're done calculating. Of course, if you want, you can type. try to type the whole thing in in one line and just press enter if you have a calculator like that. But you've got to make sure if you do that, that you put parentheses around the bottom of the fraction. So wherever you do it, if you get $550.60, then you're, you're uh, doing it well. And feel free to contact me for help with your particular calculator if you like. So what I'd like you to do is uh, use the formula and the and the pre what we've learned the previous exa previous example and try this one yourself and um, I guess I'll just we'll go through it step by step okay so we're going to try and use this formula what I'd like you to do first is get the monthly interest rate that's what R is isn't it so here's one place where students a student might make a mistake. What's the monthly interest rate? Can you calculate that? Press pause and take your time if you like. Monthly interest rate. So the APR is 4.8%. The annual percentage rate is 4.8%. What monthly interest rate is that? Got it? So 4.8% of course is 4.8 over 100 per cent per hundred which of course is 0 0.048 but to get the monthly interest rate we take the annual percentage rate and we divide it by 12 okay what does that give us 0 0.004 right so what is 1 plus r equal to? That's also in the calculation. 1 plus r. 1 plus r equals 1.004. What is t equal to? And t is the number of months of the annuity or the number of months that the annuity is paying out money after you're retired okay so it says that you have set up a life annuity with a present value of four hundred fifty fifty thousand dollars if your life expectancy at retirement is 23 years in other words 23 years more for example if you're retired 65 and your annuity is 23 that's going to add an extra 23 years on okay so that means your annuity will last until you're 88 does that make sense so the 23 years life expectancy at retirement means you're going to live 23 years after you retire okay what will your monthly income be take the APR to be 4.8 percent so the number of months of the annuity is going to be what the T. Can you find T? So the annuity is going to last 23 years but it's going to pay out every month and so that's what we're looking for. So we take our 23 and T isn't just 23 it's 23 times 12 which is 276 isn't it okay so using our formula the monthly annuity payment is going to be what so if we have managed to save all this money how much money will we get each month while we're retired that's what it means so you've already saved that you're 65 let's imagine um, how much is it going to pay out each month now So the monthly annuity yield. So um, use the formula and just see if you can set up the formula correctly first on your own. So just 
put everything into the formula that you need and see how you see what you've got. Press pause if you need more time, then I'll do it, okay? So I hope you've tried to, to type in the form to write down the formula. Uh, so your nest egg is four hundred and fifty thousand for one thing. So I hope we got that. Then it's times R, right? Multiply by R, which is 0 0.004. And then multiply by 1 plus R to the power of T. What does that look like? 1 plus R to the power of T. 1 plus R is 1.004. And T is what? 276, isn't it? So that's the top. Nest egg times R times 1 plus R to the power of T. Nest egg times R, 1 plus R to the power of T. So go ahead and do the bottom now. What's the bottom of the fraction look like? So it's 1 plus R to the power of T minus 1. Have you got it? Did you get 1.004 to the power of 276? Then subtract 1, right? So the trick is now we need to carefully calculate this. Don't round too much while you're calculating it, otherwise you'll your your answer will be off by by too much. So um go ahead and calculate that. And I'm going to do the simple calculator method. Okay? So, uh, any, in any case, please uh, press pause and try and calculate uh, the top and then check the video. Okay, so press, press pause, try and calculate the top of the fraction, then check the video. Okay. Okay, I hope you press pause and try it. I'm going to do it now. So, you should have followed PEMDAS because we have an exponent here. You do exponents first, then you multiply. So, if you have a 1.004 and then find your exponent key to the power of 276 equals 3.00957 okay then multiply it by these two numbers so multiply by 0 0.004 equals this number then multiply it by 450,000 times by 450000 equals that okay so on the top you should have 5417.22957 and press pause and do the bottom calculate the bottom okay so I'll do it now it should be 1.004 to the power of 276 which gives this number and then we subtract 1 and we get this number which is 2.00957198 okay so just to be safe i'm just just so you don't have to remember because i mean once again if you put if you gave this uh, five decimal places and you gave this one you know three or four you'd probably get the right answer to the nearest cent but just to be safe so you don't have to remember for what particular problem do we need to keep what particular amount of uh, uh, digits just type in the whole thing and then you'll be sure to, to get the right answer right so we've got 5417.22957 divided by 2.00 oops so go ahead and do that one and see what you get Two point zero zero five seven one nine eight three and um so yeah you should get two six nine five point seven one three one and so on. So round this to the nearest cent and what do we have? Two thousand 
six hundred ninety five dollars seventy one cent okay so basically if you with this APR of four point eight percent if you have already saved four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you're kind of living you're retired now you're living off that for twenty three years you will get this amount of money every month okay and of course some of this money most of this is coming from the four hundred fifty thousand but some of it's coming from interest earned on that savings as well right